Yesterday, 21 opposition MPs and 38 former, former IS officers wrote to the Prime Minister a joint memorandum and they uh, invoked two issues which actually meant that allege an allegation that the centre is trying to encroach upon the matters of the state governments. It raised the issue of uh, proposed amendments in the IS cadre rules and how the governors have been uh, conducting themselves in the states ruled by the opposition parties. I am joined by TMC MP Sukhendu Shekhar Rai. Sir, uh, yesterday the letter, the joint memoranda ha has been sent to the Prime Minister. I want to understand from you because the men that let, uh, memorandum also mentions the incidents which happened in West Bengal. What was the need of sending such a strong worded memorandum to the Prime Minister? Because it was not only the wish of the political parties in the opposition, but it was also desired by a number of uh, former uh, uh, bureaucrats and diplomats. Mm. They are also concerned with the way the central government has taken unilateral decision in regard to the amendment of uh, All India Services Cadre Rules. Mm. So, uh, according to us, the go government of India must have a discussion with the respective states and already nine, uh, nine chief ministers and more than 200 former um, executives, they have written to the, uh, they have expressed their concern and that has been taken up by the parliamentarians also. Mm. Yeah, you know, yesterday we submitted a memorandum to the prime minister. Now, uh, in the Lok Sabha, in reply to the question of Mr. Shogoto Rai of our party, yesterday the uh, prime minister said that the comments have been invited from the respective states and that are, that are being examined. But you see, in majority of the states, the uh, party ruling at the center, they are also ruling the states. Mm. So the double-engine governments, the so-called double-engine governments. So what type of comments will come from them, it is understood by everybody. Right. And uh, what is the motive behind? All on a sudden, after 75 years of independence, what prompted the government to take this unilateral decision? Because they want to centralize the, even the executive powers of the states by coercion. So we are against that. So are you saying that if those amendments are rolled out, uh, the powers of the state governments will be reduced and to an extent uh, it will be controlled by the central government? Yes, of course. Very often they will call, call back the IS officers for central deployment deployment in central service and that will destabilize the functioning of the state administration that is the reason so, but don't you think this is going to reduce the uh, confrontation that we have seen in states such as west bengal jharkhand or for that matter delhi if the officers are also uh, working uh, in, in coordination with the central government government is actually they are on their feet to harp on the very root of our uh, federal structure this is another example where the government has stepped out mm. to uh, kill the federal structure of the government. Even the Prime Minister on the other day said, one state, one ration card, one election, all this and that. So unification. Or, But Article 1 of the Constitution says, the very first article, that India, that is Bharat, shall be a union of states. It is not a unitary state. Mm. But all these actions uh, actually show that government wants a unitary government, mm. which, which, which cannot be done because uh, the federalism as ruled by Supreme Court is a basic structure of the constitution. Even the parliament has no power to amend or hit the basic structure of the constitution. Right. In, a, in a plethora of cases, Supreme Court has ruled this. Right. One more question, sir. Uh, there's a specific reference to what is happening in West Bengal. So, are you completely, you know, uh, in a way, uh, rattled or ached or angry and the way we saw the, you know, uh, things snowballing in the state where the chief minister blocked uh, the governor uh, uh, Dhankar. So, is that the reason that uh, this issue has been pushed by the TMC in that joint memorandum? Not only uh, TMC, 10 political parties they have signed. Why? Because not only in West Bengal, in Kerala, in Tamil Nadu, in Maharashtra, in other states also, opposition rule states, the governors are behaving like the political functionaries. Mm. Never happened in the history of Bengal or anywhere in India since independence that a governor is making press statements day in and day out against the state government, senior functionaries, including the constitutional authorities like 
the chief minister or the speaker of the assembly he is criticizing openly criticizing so never happened in the history of india okay. so uh, the governor raj bhavan or the governor house become the party office of the ruling party at the center so, uh, what are you expecting from the prime minister's office after this memorandum no, no. it is our humble duty to bring bring the invite the attention of the honorable prime minister that look this agent of the central government hmm. we we had so many agents in the past no one behaved like this and so and is uh, at the personal level also he is uh, criticizing our chief minister the senior functionaries uh, i am making a list of the uh, officers police officer and even you know in, on one occasion in kuch bihar standing on a street he was rebuking thrashing one police officer is it a, is it expected from a governor we are very much disturbed other friends are disturbed other states are disturbed that is why we have taken a combined effort to initiate action against this so first at as a first stage first step we have invited the honorable uh, attention of the honorable prime minister uh, if it is not resolved then we will fight it out both inside and outside the parliament okay so one last question uh, the hijab controversy is still simmering and we are seeing that several student organizations are protesting in the national capital and in karnataka the matter is not getting resolved even though it's a, a matter is in front of the court i want to understand from you what is the tmc stand on the entire controversy where does it is is it siding with are they with the uh, muslim women who have been demanding to wear hijabs inside the school or what's the stand of the party tinamool congress uh, maintains that every citizen of this country has a right to practice his own religion his or her own religion in the manner they are practicing for decades together all on a sudden some fatwa will come from a government that you stop this doing uh, this is a direct interference on the religious practice of the citizens to which we are opposed so you are saying the uh, girls and the students should be allowed to uh, wear hijab inside the education i have already stated that as per the constitutional provision every citizen has a right to practice religion hmm. and what in what way which way that if it is not harmful to the nation then only some reasonable restrictions can be imposed right. but since the matter is pending before the special bench of karnataka high court matter is sub judice we cannot go beyond this done? the politics of politics of uh, one nation one religion one language okay thanks a lot for speaking to us so that was okendu sekhar rai speaking to india today on the issue of joint memorandum that has been sent out to the prime minister he is saying that there have been instances in west bengal as well as other states where the governors have tried to encroach upon the issues which come or fall under the domain of the state governments and they are also demanding the scrapping of the proposed amendments in the ias cadre rules and along with that he says that the tmc stands with the fundamental rights of the uh, of the students uh they get to choose as to what they want to wear with video journalist dalveer singh this is amit bhardwaj for india today from delhi